So the King Air 90 or all King Airs have, or most of them have PT6 engines and uh, it's a reverse flow engine for those that are familiar with that. If you're not, there's plenty of videos on YouTube to uh, explain that. But effectively what happens with a reverse flow engine, the air enters at the intake, comes to the back, and then it is compressed, combusted, and then exhausted at the front there. So it flows that way. And there's a reduction gearbox to take care of the prop. But um, I'm just showing the engine anti-ice system today. And if you look in here, uh, on this side of the engine, we've currently got the engine anti-ice turned off. And I'm gonna walk over to the other side where we have the engine anti-ice turned on. And I'll just explain the differences uh, now. So with the reverse flow engine, as I said, the air comes in here. And then what happens is you can currently see that um, there's a door at the back that's come down. And there's a flap here that's lifted up. So at the moment, all the available air that enters here gets to go into the intake, gets compressed and um, is available. So that's why when the engine anti-ice is off, the torque and the performance of the engine increases because all available air goes um, into the, um, the the air intake and uh, into the plenum. So, so that's how it is right now. If I come over to this side, you will see it looks a little bit different. There's a flap that's come down here. That's, in the, that's that over there. And in the back, it's very difficult to see on the video here at the moment, but in the back, there's a that door that covered the air at the back has lifted up and the reason why is uh, for inertial separation of any uh, ice particles um, or foreign objects on the ground at the moment here as you see the air goes in goes into the intake and this little exit at the back here there's that door you can see how it's completely closed so all available air goes in and is available now whereas on the side that has the engine anti-ice turned on the air comes in and if I come back to this little outtake at the back here or this outflow area here you will see that the door is lifted up and um, there's now an opportunity for air to come out so what happens is if there's any foreign objects or ice or pellets or anything like that that goes in the momentum the inertia keeps it going and vents it overboard so that it doesn't go into the engine intake. That's why with uh, these aircraft, you always have the engine anti-ice on when you're on the ground and taxiing. And uh, that's what an inertial separator does. So I'll shortly just ask my colleague to operate it so you can see how it works. To the left of the pilot's control column, we can see the engine anti-ice switches. So they're currently both selected on for the left and the right engine. Then if we look at the engine parameters, look at the green arrows. They tell us what torque the engine is producing. 1,380 pounds on the left, 1,360 pounds on the right. Now, when we switch the engine anti-switches, engine anti-ice switches to off, watch those green um, arrows. Look how they climb. Without moving the power levers or changing anything else, those engines are now more efficient. They're producing more torque, and that's because of more air being available for the uh, combustion process and the compressed stage of the combustion. And uh, by switching those engine anti-ice switches back to on, we will now check and see how those green arrows drop because less air is now available, but it does also mean that any ice particles or pellets or foreign object particles will be bypassing the engine through the inertial separation. Okay, so my colleague is just going to move the switch now and you'll see what happens. Go for it. If you look in there now, watch what happens. See how this flap comes down. And behind that flap, if you're able to see, you will see a door opening in the back there. So you just turn the engine anti-ice from off to on. That flap's come down. The uh, doors open at the back, so now any foreign objects that go in here will go straight through instead of going up into the uh, intake for the engine. And I'll go to the other side and we'll do the reverse. At the moment, if you look very closely, you'll see that the flap is down and that at the back the door is open. You'll have to look very closely. You see there's a, there's a gap. There's a gap in there, so I'm trying to do my best to film that here. 
Right, so go for it. See how that flat now comes up. And watch what happens with the door in the back. I'll try and zoom in. Come down here, you'll see the door coming down. There it comes, see the door coming down? So that's now closed the door at the back, lifted the flap, so all available air now goes into the uh, into the engine, which is why you see the performance rising when the engine anti-ice is turned off. Right, just to give you another view of the back here, this is at the back in the back outlet here, so you can see the door closing. Okay, go for it. So the engine anti-ice was uh, selected on, but now it's selected off which is why that flap has gone up and this door is coming to close. So it's effectively like two flaps almost, but the bottom line is it stops the uh, air from going out and it all goes now into the intake. So that's where you get the performance improvement. Okay, open. And now with the engine anti-ice selected on, we want to have any foreign objects like ice or pellets or any fod on the ground to, by way of inertia, be vented overboard. So it'll enter in the front and then the inertia spills it overboard. And that's the engine anti-ice on a Kinger.